In Jesus' day, the Sea of Galilee was an important body of water utilized for travel, the distribution of goods and crops, and of course, for fishing. Hundreds of different ships would have traversed the waters of this 14 by 8 mile lake, and 15 to 16 ancient ports provided docking points and shelter from storms. The Sea of Galilee is also Israel's only freshwater lake and is the world's lowest geographical freshwater lake. It's also known by the names Sea of Tiberias, the name of an important city in Jesus' day, and the Lake Kinneret. Today, its waters are higher than they were in the first century. This has long been evidenced by the flooding of the ruins of ancient homes and villages that would not have originally been built where they could be regularly flooded by the seasonal changes of the lake. More evidence comes in the form of modern droughts. When drought arrives and the level of the lake recedes, ancient ports and their ruined breakwaters are revealed. The higher level of the lake today is due to a natural change that occurred around a thousand years ago. The main outlet of the lake into the Jordan River was silted up and replaced by an outlet of smaller size that slowly rose the level of the lake, resulting in water that's three feet higher than in Jesus' day. Today, the Sea of Galilee has a large tourist industry thanks to its appearance in the Gospels. Jesus sailed here, taught here, walked on water here, calmed storms, and visited villages and cities surrounding the lake. And now, thanks to archaeological investigation, a lot is known about the harbors where he and the disciples would have docked. Ancient harbors consisted of breakwaters, which were large stone-constructed arms that would extend out into the lake to create an area of still water for ships to be safer from the lake's famous storms. After the breakwaters, piers would be built to moor ships to, and promenades where sailors, travelers, and merchants could walk. Harbors could also have markets for selling fish, areas to repair boats, storehouses, administrative buildings, watchtowers, and even Roman toll stations. We're told in the Gospels that the disciple Matthew Levi worked at a tax booth in Capernaum, which apparently was a popular port for travelers and trade. Work at Capernaum has revealed a large harbor with several piers of different shapes and sizes, including long and curved piers and triangular shaped piers. At Kersey, which was known as Gergesa, the site of Jesus' exorcism of demons from a man into a herd of pigs, a large, shallow, rock-cut pool was a part of the ancient harbor. Researchers believed that fishermen would keep their live, fresh-caught fish in it for sale. At the ancient city of Gadara, breakwaters enclosed an area of three acres and boasted a very large promenade. Some researchers believe that from this harbor, Roman nautical games reenacting naval battles were performed. Thanks for watching. Click the playlist on screen now to watch more spotlights. And if you want to read the full article, click the link in the description. You can always go to BibleDiscoveryTV.com for more videos, articles, and resources.